Hey everyone! Today I'm going to be giving a little bit more of an in-depth explanation on how I spike wigs as well as show a demo of me actually spiking a wig just to kind of pull everything together from the last two spiking videos I've done so you get the full process. If you've not yet watched either of those, I'll be sure to put links in the description as I may not cover some of the same information in this video. So with that all out of the way, let's get to it. When beginning to cut into my wigs, I like to start with the hairs that frame the face first. This is just a personal preference, but I do feel like it's a good place to start because this is the one part of the wig that can line up with parts of your face. I find this to be helpful because it gives you something to act as a guide for where your initial spikes are gonna go. And from there, all the rest of your spike locations will reference back to the ones that you know are in the correct place. But again, that's just my personal preference and take on it. So don't feel like you have to start there. It's just what I find to be easiest for me. So now to actually talk about what I'm doing in the video. With these front spikes, I don't really need to add any volume to them since they're right against my face for the most part. So all I'm doing is trimming them to the length that I want and hairspraying them into place. And don't forget the hairdryer is your best friend during this whole process. After spraying your pieces, you can quickly set them in place with your hairdryer on low heat so you're not stuck holding them forever while waiting for them to dry. So something else I guess I can talk about while this time lapse is going on could be how I cut into my wigs. <laughs> It's probably a little hard to see with how fast things are moving, so I might just end up making a separate video on how I cut wigs and maybe some trimming techniques you can use, but I guess while we're here, I'm going to give it a shot. So, when cutting into wigs, there are two main cutting methods I like to use. The first one is what you see me using to take the initial length off, and it's what I'd call a razoring method of some sort. <laughs> Basically all I'm doing is dragging the blades of the scissors across the fibers of the wigs without actually closing the scissors. And by doing this, not all the hair fibers are going to end up the same length, and so the ends are going to be more wispy and thinned out, which in turn makes it easier to bring your hair to a really sharp point at the bottom. The one issue you may run into with this method of cutting is unfortunately by dragging your scissors across the plastic fibers, you're going to make them angry, and the base of your wig is going to start getting kinda gnarled up. So you have to make sure you're constantly brushing it out. That is, unless you're trying to spike a wig, in which case this drawback becomes extremely helpful by sort of slightly pre-teasing the base of your wig just by cutting. So that's kind of neat. Okay, so let's take a little pause on that since we've reached a different section of the wig so I can explain what I'm doing here. So now that I've moved away from the spikes around the face, I've gotten to a part of the wig where I need to start adding a little bit of volume. These spikes still lay pretty close to the base of the wig, but I want a little more dimension than the initial ones I did. Thankfully, by using the razoring method with the scissors to cut my spikes down, I'm getting enough teasing in the base of the wig to give each spike a tiny little boost of volume. Now, for some of the top layers, I did go in with my teasing brush and add just a bit more volume to them, but for the most part, I'm still just cutting, slightly smoothing, and then spraying into place. Alright, now back to cutting. The second method I use a lot is cutting vertically into the hair fibers. This will give you a similar wispy effect to the other method I use since your fibers will end up at varying lengths. However, it's not going to be quite as wispy, so just keep that in mind. I mostly use this method on hair fibers I've already trimmed down if they aren't quite short enough, or if I need to cut a section that I don't want to get gnarled up at the base because I've already smoothed it out. You can also use it when taking a lot of length off a wig, I just personally find it more difficult than using the razoring method, and I really like the results the razoring method produces versus what cutting vertically produces, but as I've already said a million times in this video, that's just my own personal preference. I highly recommend playing around with a bunch of different methods of cutting on your own to see what you like best and what you find the easiest. Alright, so now that I've run out of things to say about my cutting methods, and I'm not sure what else I could possibly elaborate on, I'm going to start skipping ahead a tiny bit to get to the good stuff so this video doesn't go on forever and bore you all to death. So now we finally reached the bigger spikes. These are what I found to be the ones that give the most people trouble, myself included. If you've already watched my basic wig spiking tutorial, you already know generally how I make these types of spikes. However, since making that video, I've done a ridiculous amount of Sora and Roxas wigs for commissions, as well as various other voluminous wigs, and have learned a couple extra things, so bear with me. So when I get to the bigger spikes on my wig, the first thing I do is trim them down to the length that I want using the razoring method. When doing this, it usually gives the spike enough volume to stand up on its own, so I can take a step back and make sure it actually stands up to the height that I want it at. Next I go in with my teasing brush and start teasing the entirety of the spike. You really want to make sure it all gets teased really good at the base so it's not trying to lean or fall over. If it's falling over on you, you either need more teasing or you have too much hair in it weighing it down. 
So if that's the case, it might be a good idea to shift some of the hair to another spike. Or you may need to thin out the top of the spike more. I've noticed the thicker the tops of spikes are, the less they want to stand up or stay together, partially because of the weight and partially because there are too many other hairs to hold on to. Next, I smooth all the outside hairs of my spike. In my previous video, I did that with a fine tooth comb, but recently I found it easier to smooth it out with the teasing brush. The teasing brush is nice because of how shallow the bristles are, so when you use it, it doesn't accidentally brush out more of the tangles from the inside of the spike than you'd want it to, giving you some really full looking spikes. Once smoothed, hit your spikes with some hairspray at the base, holding your spikes from the very top in the direction that you want. Set it with the hair dryer, then spray the tip of your spike with the hairspray, and pinch it together, also setting it with the hair dryer. And then you've got your spike. Now, this is going to be a little bit of a side tangent, but it might be helpful to some of you out there, so I'm going to say it anyways. When I first got a teasing brush, I would use it by scrubbing the brush back and forth at the base of the wig while simultaneously trying to back comb it. <laughs> That or I would try to back comb while not holding onto the fibers well enough so it would just kind of tangle at the base. At the time I was like, heck yeah, this thing's so great, it's teasing so fast, I'm never going back to anything else. And I mean, yeah, it was tangling the fibers and it did go faster than using the fine tooth comb, but it was only like half teasing things, so I spent a ton of time re-back combing sections a lot. So my biggest advice if you're using a teasing comb is to hold onto your fibers at the top and comb towards your wig in chunks to make sure you don't miss any sections of your spike and also to make sure your teasing actually teases. <laughs> so now that I've said all that, I feel like it should have been very obvious, but I'm really dumb and it never crossed my mind that I was using it wrong until I started doing four or five Sora wigs in a row at a given time and was about driven to insanity at the amount of time it was taking to do just one spike. So moving on, we are now past all of the big spikes and I've made it back to all my smaller spikes that don't really need a ton of volume. So these just got put all over the sides and the back of the wig. I didn't section any of the back off beforehand because I wasn't as concerned about the spike placements since it's just a ton of tiny ones and it would have taken forever to rubber band all of those little sections off. So now that I've got all my spikes put into the wig how I want them, it's time to clean things up. So what I do first is take some clear tacky glue and put a tiny amount on the ends of every single spike to make sure that they don't come apart later. To do this, I roll the ends of the tips together between my fingers to make sure the glue gets on all the hairs as well as to twist the hairs around each other. Once the glue has been applied all over, I trim off any long pieces that are sticking out of them. Then last but not least, I found that if you spent this long on any wig and you never want to have to restyle it because it fell apart during use, hairspray the crap out of it. Now you may be thinking, but didn't we already use a ton of hairspray to get the spikes to stay in place? Yes, yes we did. But back in the day when I first started doing wigs, I'd style them, they would look super nice, and then after a couple times of wearing them, all the spikes would kind of spread open and just look really messy, even with the tacky glue sealing them. Since I started doing wig commissions, I've learned that the best thing you can do to any wig is just spray it down after you're done for good measure. On a wig this spiky, I do about four coats of hairspray all over, drying it with a hair dryer in between layers. Now when spraying down your wig, make sure you keep the hairspray at least eight to 10 inches away. If you get too close to your wig, it'll leave beads of spray behind and get a little too shiny or clumpy looking, so just be careful. Anyway, that's all I've got for this rundown of wig spiking. Hopefully this explanation gave you guys a good idea of how to spike a wig all over and make sure it stays spiky for the most part. If you have any questions or suggestions for future tutorials or videos you'd like to see, please leave a comment below. And as always, thank you so much for watching, and I hope this helps you with your own wig adventures.